Getting started with T-SQL in Azure Data Studio, T-SQL Functions. By the end of this video, you will be familiar with four types of generally used T-SQL functions, which include string, math, date, and advanced functions. In this video, we will go through each of these functions in detail and run examples to help you understand them better. We're going to start by going through seven string functions. The concat function is used to add two or more strings together. You need to provide strings in the bracket, separated by commas, and run this query, and we get the results ABC. The left function is used to extract a number of characters from a string. Starting from the left, we are extracting the first five letters from the string email address. Then we get the result as email. The ltrim function removes the leading spaces from a string. In this example, we are removing spaces before the string emails, which results as email with no spaces. The len function returns the length of a string, so the length of the string emails is 6. The replace function replaces all occurrences of a substring within a string with a new substring. In this example, we are replacing the letter E with the letter C, and the result becomes Cmail. The upper function converts a string to uppercase letters, so our result is emails in uppercase. Finally, we have the substring function which extracts some characters from a string. We can specify what the starting position and length of the string we want to be. For instance, let's say our starting position is 3 and the length of the string we want is 5. So we get the result alad from email address. Next, we will transition to some math functions. To better demonstrate some of these math functions, we need to reference sample data from a table to describe how to use them. We introduced an orders table in the previous video about joins. Just as a refresher, this is what the orders table looks like. Now, let's look at five commonly used math functions, average, count, max, min, and sum functions. The average function is to get the average value of an expression. We want to get the average order amount from the orders table. So we are getting 108 as the result, which is the total order amount divided by five orders. The count function is to get the number of records in the orders table. It returns five because the total number of records in the orders table is five. The max function is to get the maximum value in a set of values. The maximum order amount in the orders table is 135. The minimum function is to get the minimum value in a set of values. Therefore, we are getting 80 as a result of the minimum order amount. The sum function is to calculate the sum of a set of values. We are getting 540 as the grand total of all the order amounts from the order table. Next, we will introduce some date functions that are commonly used. Get date, date diff, date add, year, month, and date part. Let's look at the first one. The get date function is used to get the current database system date and time. So when we run this query, we are getting the current date and time from the system. The date diff function returns the difference between two dates. In this example, we got a three-day difference between these two dates. The date add function adds a date time interval to a date and then returns the date. So we are getting one month after the date provided in the function. The date part function returns a specified part of a date. This example is to get the year part of the date, which is 2020. The year function is to return the year part for a specific date, so the result of the query is 2022, and this works regardless of which format your data is in. 
For instance, if our date is written as a month, date, and year, it will still yield the correct results. The month function is to return the month part of a specific date, so the result of this query is 8. Finally, we will look at some more advanced functions such as a rank function, case 1, and leg functions for delta values. The rank function helps to rank columns within the partition. It allows us to add a record's position within the result set or within each partition. Here is the syntax to use the rank function. We have the rank over partition by expression, order by expression, ascending or descending. Here, the square brackets mean it's optional. The partition by clause divides the output returned by the from clause into the partition. This clause is optional to use in the query. The order by clause determines the order of rows in ascending or descending based on the desired column name. Excluding the order by clause will not cause any errors, but you will not get the desired output. Let's continue to use the orders table for our example. First, let's rank the order amount in the table. We can solve it by writing this query. As a result, you will see that it is sorted by the order amount in descending order. The highest order amount is listed at the top and the lowest order amount is listed at the bottom. Next, we will look at a scenario where we would like to sort the order amount by each product. We use the partition by clause to perform calculations on each product group. Then the results will show the ranking for each product. For the same product, the higher order amount is ranked prior to the smaller order amount. Sometimes we need to do logical comparisons. This is where we could use a case statement to test multiple logical expressions listed in when clauses. For example, we want to add a column as group to categorize the order amount into three groups. If the amount is higher than 100, then it is grouped as high. If the amount is between 90 to 100, then it is grouped as medium. If the amount is below 90, then it's grouped as low. We can write the query with case when as this. You need to use an end statement to close the case when query and specify a name group to the case when statement as a new column name. Then you will get the desired results. It adds a column group to the results and indicates the group type is high, medium, or low based on the logic calculated on order amount. Last, when you calculate value changes, you will need to use the lag function to achieve delta values from previous rows. The syntax for the lag function is lag expression offset default over partition by order by. Expression is a mandatory argument. It takes the column name over which the lag function performs calculations. Offset is optional. It is the number of previous rows from the current row from which the function must fetch the value. If offset is not specified, the default value is 1. Default is also optional. This value will be returned if the offset value exceeds the partition range. If this parameter is not specified, null is returned. The partition by clause is optional. It divides the result set by the from clause into groups to which the specified function is applied. If we omit the partition by clause, the whole result set is treated as a single partition by the function. The order by clause is also optional. It is used to order the data values in each partition. By default, it uses ascending order to sort your data. Let's look at an example to understand it better. We use the lag function on order amount with offset as 1 and default as 1 to get differences from previous rows. The data is also sorted by the order date. When we run this query, we can see that the result is sorted by the order date and the previous order amount column pulled values from the previous row. As the default is set to 1, the first row in the previous order amount column shows as 1, and the delta column calculates the difference of order amount 
and previous order amount. If we change the leg function by adding partition by product and run the query again, you will see that the previous order amount value is pulling the previous rows value only within the same product group. And the first row for the previous order amount is showing as one. That's it. You have learned a lot of generally used functions and a few advanced functions which are useful for daily analysis tasks. Next steps include learning how to create subqueries. For more details, check out the Power BI toolbox.